Hey, Brian, so how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Cool. So you just got off stage and you were talking all about the, the Drizzle project. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about Drizzle? How did that come to be out of MySQL? What is it about? What's it designed to be, et cetera? Well, we noticed about around 2005 when we were uh, doing the 5.0 release that a certain set of customers, probably their needs weren't really being met. We had been moving MySQL more towards um, basically OEM adoption, towards more ERP applications, a lot of things we were doing for SAP. But there was a core segment of the population which had not were wanting actually additional features, they were wanting different extensions. So when we started working on Drizzle, we asked how do we assess, or basically let's assess their needs and then see how we could actually put together um, you know, a version of MySQL that was much more based for their needs. So what we did is we you know, took, you know, went and talked to a bunch of folks at different companies and then came back and said, okay, let's do these things. Let's look at C, for instance, of turning it into um, a database that instead of it being a standalone component database, is more of something that can sit into a, an infrastructure, uh, you know, cloud-like environment so things like, you know, for instance, logging can be pushed out to other, you know, other environments, authentication. Let's actually create a microkernel design and allow different plugin points to actually exist in it so that those points can be extended for, um, you know, for whatever environment that you're actually in. And so one of the, was one of the big design principles to get it really skinny? So um, one of the things we wanted to do was look at, look, you know, look and turn it into a microkernel design, which meant stripping lots of the uh, components of the database out and putting them into, you know, basically modular interfaces, so that different pieces can, can go in. So today, for instance, the kernel of Drizzle um, is a much more microkernelish design, which is closer to being about a, a third of the original kernel design um, from, say, the 5.1 trees. So Drizzle is much, much smaller in its code base. It's much, much easier to wrap your hand, you know, wrap your mind around. It's only about about 113,000 lines of code um, compared to more than 300,000 lines of code. So the idea is how do we, you know, strip pieces out so that they're very easily changed and revisioned in so, and put some modules. At the same time, it also makes the kernel a lot easier to understand and to work with for a, an incoming new developer. And it sounds like this whole effort has been very community focused. Now, of course, MySQL is, a, is, a, is an open source project, yet this one seems to be open sourcer -er, or more open or... Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things we want to do is we really want to enable uh, community development. I mean, um, one of the problems with MySQL was that we had kind of gotten to the point where we had hired everybody inside, and patches really weren't coming in as much as we had ever wanted them to. I mean, patches pretty much had come to a standstill being accepted. So when we worked on Drizzle, part of one of the things that... Um, we wanted to do instead was was flip that around. Um, Drizzle's had since the inception probably a hundred plus uh, has had more than a hundred contributors to it. Um, you know, uh, Sun staff that's actually employed on it um, represents only six to seven percent of the actual developers that have worked on it. So the idea is to really enable it so that many people are, are able to work on the project and be able to contribute to the project. So it's a, a lot more focused on community development and really basic open source principles. And you said that it's not production ready yet, yet you've had a lot of releases and are people using it in production? What do you say? That, I think you said they would be crazy to use it in production. Well, right now, what, uh, one of the things that we're making a point of doing is, is that we're still readdressing what we thought were fundamental concept problems that, you know, sounded good a decade ago when we first started working on MySQL, but, you know, 10 years later aren't really holding up uh, any longer as really kind of these things matter as much anymore. I mean, they matter to a certain segment or to OEM, but the, fo the, core, the, the focus that we have or to the people we have, it doesn't really, those pieces don't really matter, matter to those particular companies and so forth. So those type of, uh, you know, uh, trying to enable one uh, is what we're after. Um, when do you think it'll actually be production ready? So at this point right now, I think we're, I think we're getting close to finishing up all the incompatible changes that we wanted to make. Um, you know, I think we were stripping through some stuff uh, about a week ago. So my goal right now is we have the Bell milestone coming up. Um, we do a every four month milestone. And with Bell, what I want to do is finish up tightening up everything. So that say when Bell is done uh, four months after August, uh, people will be able to start looking at it as production um, environment and start testing production. I mean, it's used in production today in uh, a few different companies. I think when it was OzCon, I was surprised. I asked in a room of probably 60 people, and there were three people who had it in production today wow. uh, that was in the room. Um, it's just that anybody, one of the reasons why we don't really consider production today is that if you have one version of Drizzle and you move to the next version of Drizzle, um, at this point you're going to have to dump the database entirely. So take your mm -hmm. data out of the database and reinsert the database. Okay. When we get to the point of where it's called production le release, you shouldn't be required to actually do that. You should be able to you know, know that you can do an upgrade and it should be just fine. 
Um, but like I said, we're still making a couple of changes that are still critical that I don't want to claim that just yet. Once we do, though, it'll be fine. And anybody who's using it today is generally in good shape. Um, it's just really that, um, you know, for my mind, what is a production database requires, you know, you can upgrade in place. And do you have uh, folks from the cloud space that are contributing and giving feedback of the, from the AWSs of the world and the rack spaces and... Uh yeah, we've actually, um, Rackspace even was uh, hiring up a couple of Drizzle developers about a couple of months ago. So we definitely have, uh, we definitely have feedback from them. We also have, um, what is it, we had one, uh, we've had two different cloud components that were given to us specifically. Uh, one was an authentication method that actually was doing HTTP auth. So because the, the certain cloud, all their authentication was HTTP. So come in, do a connection, Drizzle just checks via the HTTP API that the authentication was okay. And that's how it checks it. Uh, another one was a uh, Gearman-based uh, query analyzer. So all the Drizzle databases were feeding into a single Gearman system that did some, some basic MapReduce operations across it to see look what query analysis was uh, across the entire cluster at all times. So you get real-time and you know you get real-time uh, feedback as to what's happening in the cluster as far as which queries are taking the most time, what pieces are actually you know uh, how much disk I was being chewed up here and there, um, which is pretty kind of sharp. And then last but not least, why Drizzle? I guess there's some cloud connotation there? Actually, it had nothing to do with that. Oh, uh, really? It had to do with the fact that I'm from Seattle. Um, and the day I was working on it, uh, it was drizzling, and I, which is basically what Seattle rain is. And uh, I was just looking for a name real quick to uh, run across the, uh, the files so that we could start, you know, um, being able to install it and minus all in the same boxes. So uh, Drizzle is entirely based on the fact that I happen to live in Seattle. Excellent. Brian Aker, thanks so much. Thank you.